and welcome back to Let's Play Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance on the Game Boy Advance. And I just have to say that if you're reading the title of this video, you should know that this is in fact the final one that I'll be doing for this particular game. So, better strap in. Because, well, even though we're close to the end, we still have some things to do, like go in here and fight some Umber Hulks. And even though we're level 21, these guys can still hit like a dump truck. And for killing this Umber Hulk, we receive a key. And of course, we always need keys, because otherwise we can't get anywhere in this place. Well, except, well, for that one key in the mines, considering it was just pretty much all that was needed for was treasure. But hey, we needed the treasure at the time, so meh. Okay, oh, there we go. That one doesn't have anything, so we'll just go ahead and leave that off well enough alone. And yeah, just in here is a illusionary wall with more treasure. Yay! Treasure! Woo! Now, let's open this up and find an amulet of strength plus five. So now we pretty much have all the strength items that we could ever want. <laughs> Look at that. 435 pounds. Let's see, and our strength is now up to 36. Damn! And wow, that's a really high base attack bonus. There, jeez. Now, let's see. There's put with arrows and an illusionary wall with a skeleton, I think. No? Oh, there it is. I think he woke up. But oh well, he's asleep now, so nothing else we can do. Alright, now let's just go ahead over here, because this is where we need to go. By the way, I think the bit with the illusionary wall where there's a secret that you have to go along, I think I may have just been making things up. Ugh. But if I didn't, oh well. I mean, we pretty much have a lot, so there's not much. Eh. Yeah, not much I could say. Well, here's where we need to use our key. And all that jazz. By the way, in this room is the most toughest enemy ever. <gasps> A solitary rat. Yeah, which dropped a shield? Ooh! Now that's interesting. And oh! We are finally maxed out on potions of the healing kind. Now, I never actually knew that rat could drop that. And, yep, maximum for potions is 999. So, yep. Now, let's just go ahead. Anything in here? Nope, nothing in there. There's a door, which we cannot open. And the only way to open it is by going in here. Apologies for that abrupt cut right there. I just decided to redo this video simply because the fact is that most of the first take I wasn't feeling it, but I didn't want to leave out my initial reactions to finding the gold shield because I never have found it before. Now, as I was saying, the reason that we came in here is not for this ring of intellect plus five, but it is to talk to this ghost right here. And it is very important that you do, otherwise you cannot progress. And let me tell you, this guy has a lot to say, so let's get started. Your feet, they echo upon the flagstones. Your breath stirs the dust. You are alive. I was once. I was Kelton, first captain of the Company of the Westering Sun. I am one of the many prisoners of this place, the Hall of Remembrance. All soldiers of the Westering Sun, all fallen in battle, all slain by treachery. We are doomed to stand, to remember, and to wait for Eldrith's release, and our own. You don't know of Eldrith? Much time has passed, I see, for her many names too have been ground beneath time's heel. Have you not heard of Eldrith, the betrayer, the traitress of swords, Eldrith of the Westering Sun? That she has been forgotten is irony of a sort. Eldrith was one of the greatest generals of the Sword Coast, 
commander of the Company of the Westering Sun, sworn sword and defender of Baldur's Gate. She served with honor and distinction in the first and last seasons of the Sundering War, the Crescent Port Siege, and finally the campaign against the Black Horde. Glory drew us, loyalty kept us, and we were proud to serve beneath her banner. Our lives were hers, and our deaths were hers. I do not know when pride burrowed into her heart, but it poisoned her, and it was a poison I did not see until it was too late. Eldreth had fought too many battles, achieved too many victories, and she had come to see the city of Baldur's Gate as her own. On the day of the great betrayal and the last day of the campaign against the Black Horde, I left my wife within the walls of Baldur's Gate, where she would be safe, and I told her I would return. She was one of the most beautiful elven maids I have ever known. There are times when I feel as if I hear her singing for me still, waiting for my return. Then I fear her spirit shall never be laid to rest while I am trapped here, my wife, to think that she suffers still and for my sake. Our company took the field against the horde and scattered them, even though the orcs and goblins outnumbered us five to one. Still, in the root, almost half their forces survived and fled the field. Eldreth was determined to pursue them, but the dukes of Baldur's Gate refused. Too many good soldiers have been lost, the dukes told us. They and the people wanted no more blood and death, and they felt the horde would not return. Eldreth was furious. Even though we had lost many men, she felt it was better we deal a death blow to the horde and ensure they never threaten Baldur's Gate again. And so she defied the dukes and led us to our deaths. Already weakened, we chanced upon one of the straggling bands of the Horde and cornered them within the Dosias Cleft. It was tactical brilliance in trapping them within the canyon, but in doing so, we gave them no choice but to fight us. Backed into a corner, the Horde proved more vicious than we had anticipated. Eldrith, fearful of losing the field, sent a messenger back to Baldur's Gate for reinforcements before the Horde broke free of her trap. The reinforcements never came, and the Horde overran us. Eldrith survived. I survived. Many of the company of the Westering Sun did not. Eldrith became a thing, a creature consumed by fury. Wounded, she returned to Baldur's Gate to demand an audience with the Dukes. Instead, she was met at the gates and told that for her disobedience upon the battlefield, the walls of Baldur's Gate would be forever closed to her and the Westering Sun. Eldrith, she gathered us, all of us who remained, all of us who had sworn to serve her, and she ordered our broken company to attack the walls of her city. She swore she would take it from the dukes, make it hers, and put the dukes to the sword. It would be justice, she said. Justice. It was suicide. We were slain almost to the man, and we were driven from the city, hounded by the remaining troops of Baldur's Gate. We knew no rest, no peace, and they pursued us for leagues upon leagues, all the way to the marsh of Chelimber. They feared Eldrith's wrath so greatly that they were determined that she would not escape alive. I died here in the marsh of Chelimber, and so did all that remained of the company of the Westering Sun. Eldrith was the last to die, brought low by crossbowmen and archers, men who feared to come within reach of her sword. Even against death, Eldrith's fury prevailed. You will find her at the top of this tower, at her watch, waiting for battle. She knows you are here, and she has attempted to seal you within this hall, as the stones of the onyx tower obey her will. But even as she is the mistress of the tower, 
our spirits are part of the tower as well. I shall allow the stones of this hall to part so that you may reach her, and I pray, kill her for the last time. Elder Swill is tied to the tower. When she is slain, this tower will die as well. You cannot escape this tower while she lives, and not after she is dead. Eldrith was one of the greatest swordsmen ever known, and hers is a murderous will. Be careful you do not approach within striking distance of her blade, or the battle shall be over for you. Still, she has given much of herself and her spirit to this tower, so she could command it. Perhaps you may find strength to defeat her by turning the link against her. If this tower is linked to her, then a blade forged from the walls of this tower and constructed on the black forge may be your greatest weapon. We will pray for you, stranger, as we pray for all Baldur's Gate. May the gods watch over you. And this guy... Oh, jeez, that was a lot. And it's for this reason alone that I have dubbed him the Ghost of Lord Dump's Past. Ooh, and see, I told you, freaking, when it comes to D&D, &D, rumors about ghosts and things like that tend to be true. Now that we have talked to that guy, we can now finally open the door, which leads to the stairwell that will lead us to the top, where Eldrith awaits. However, there's still... Just a few more things that we can do here. Or I'll find in particular, and I don't need any of those. Well, first off, if I open this up, I found a plate... A... Bah, let me say that again. We have found a plate... Full plate male suit of plus fiveness. Oh, jeez. And there we have it. We now have the best armor of the game, right? Wrong. That's because we have the second best suit in the game, and you can probably guess as to what the actual best suit of armor is. Yeah. And we're gonna go ahead and find this ultimate suit of armor, which is actually located somewhere in this Black Forge. And something that I should mention is that I did re-upload part 11, because thanks to Mystery Accent, I was informed of the fact that that bugs had eaten pretty much the last 10 minutes of that video. Now, before I do go to where I can find the ultimate suit of armor is located, or whatnot, I need to return here because of the fact is I missed a chest. Oops! And in here is nothing more than a ring of dexterity plus five. Now, where is this suit of armor, you might ask. Well, we need to go over here first. And, of course, deal with these spiders. And also, a solitary skeletal archer! Who is going to run away like a wimp? If only you could smash the thing to pieces and lay it to rest, we can be done with him. Or it. Whatever, take your pick. And here we have a Ring of Constitution plus five! Now, in order to find this suit of armor, you need to stand right about here. Because, as you saw by that chest, yeah, there's a hidden room. And what's in these chests is obviously quite nice, because, yeah, I've pretty much been talking about it. Ugh. Oops, oops, I meant to open up that chest. And here we have it. Let's just go ahead and drop all this lame gear, and we're now back to the way... We're now back to the base model uh, we seen in the beginning of the game. Now, let's go ahead and pick these things up. And here we have the gold boots. The gold armor. The gold helmet. And the gold gloves. Now, you'd think this stuff would be the absolutely weakest stuff in the game, considering it's gold and it also should be rather heavy, but I'm guessing that's probably due to the fact that it's magic that's making it extremely durable and also very light for 
gold, that is. And, well, there we have it. Just gonna go back to the stairwell, and I am actually going to level grind just a little bit, so that way I can actually max out dodge so we can see the the best of the best armor that class that we can get in the game well I'll just go ahead and get back close to leveling up and I am back got enough experience to where one enemy will push me over the threshold so let's slay the spider and see those letters pop up for the final time. Hooray, we are now level 22, so let's max this out. Get us, yeah, a whopping five armor. And let's see, death blow, max that out. So now we have a plus 10 attack bonus and put point in meditation, which increases our regeneration by 25% per. And in test, intensive I don't know what that's supposed to be is. And test fortitude, which increases 50%. Yeah, increases regeneration by 50%. And our armor is now at a whopping 153. However, I would prefer to have my strength up at max, considering that I am going to need all of the damage bonuses that I can get for fighting Eldrith. Because, yeah, the fight is inevitable. Now, let's just go ahead and save this game for the final time and go up to Eldrith's Watch. And there she is, the one that has caused all this trouble. The one consumed by hatred for her betrayal because pride had consumed her. So, let's go ahead and talk to her, shall we? So, the dogs of Baldur's Gate once again hound me, and all the way to my sanctuary this time, though it lies a horizon's distance from their walls. Can it be they fear me that much? They have that much wisdom, at least. I served Baldur's Gate with all of my first life, only to be repaid with betrayal. They cost me a battle, the lives of my soldiers, and my reputation. Now I am but a sentence or two in a sage's book, a footnote, forever a traitor. I have bested death, and I have nothing to fear from you, or Baldur's Gate. Know that as long as I stand, the war against Baldur's Gate shall continue, and I shall be victorious. May You may hold the field, dog, but the day is mine. Now, let us end this. And it is final boss time against Eldrith, who is actually rather formidable. And the thing is, our shield cannot block her attacks. Yeah, the first enemy that actually can bypass it. Her, her blade is just that dangerous. Now it's, just, it's you and me, Eldrith! Yeah, and I'm going to go this mano a mano with the Onyx Sword. Yeah, you don't really need the Onyx Sword, but it is the best weapon, after all. Well, melee weapon. Well, it would be the best weapon if it would hit! And every so often that you damage... Yeah, for every portion of her bar that you take off, she grows larger. And, of course, you remember that attack that the orb spewed out? Yeah, she sometimes does that. And, of course, she also throws the spectral swords, which just home in on you. And there's just no way of... Just, just no way of actually countering that. Ah! Well, it's a good thing we have all these potions. And here we go! She's gotten a little bit bigger! Jeez! What is she doing? Stacking in large person? Because you technically can't. Actually, not technically. You actually cannot stack that spell. Unless she's, like, casting a greater version of it. I don't know. That or it's just a monster ability. And there we go! We're on the final legs! Bring it, Eldrith! It's over! And so it has come to pass that I shall die twice. And the second time shall be the last. 
I... The tower will not hold. You must leave this place. I ask your forgiveness. I... Let anger cloud my vision. I harmed those who had sworn to serve me. In all these things, great harm has been done. Let Baldur's Gate have its peace. I shall not rise again to challenge it. Though it will doubtless need others such as you to defend it from others that wish it harm. Now, leave me to die. This tower shall be my tomb. In the flash of the portal's light, Eldris Tower was no more. The lightning rained from the tower, and flames ablazed from within. And thus, in a storm of fire and lightning, Eldrith died a second death. But it was all part of a much larger design. He has done it. Eldrith is undone. The tower destroyed. Now we may continue without interference, Master. Where did the portal lead? It led to a far distant land, far from Baldur's Gate, far from the Sunset Mountains, far from the Marsh of Chelimber, and far from safety. That is a tale for another time. And there you have it. That's the end of Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance on the Game Boy Advance. And I have to say that the ending also just ended quite abruptly, as there is no credits to this game whatsoever, which is odd. Yeah. And, of course, as the game hinted, there is indeed a sequel to this game, Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance 2, which was only ever released on the Xbox and PlayStation 2, from what I've read. Though, of course, I will want to get around to that eventually, though if I do play that game, I would want to play this game again, but on the PlayStation 2, and maybe even actually do it cooperatively, because the fact is, I've read that that game actually has co-op, which, if it does, that'll actually be pretty fun. Maybe. Now, for my quick thoughts on the game, I think it's an alright D&D handheld experience, and... As basic as the gameplay was in certain areas, i definitely say that it was serviceable. Though I have to say that I really wish there was a faster way to get back to the shop and back to where you were, because walking back and forth all the way was rather tedious, and the fact that there's no music at all just makes the game, just playing the game, kind of jarring. And just, honestly, the bits where it did come in was just, like, out of the blue. But hey. Anyway. Now, before I get to the bonus stuff that I want to show, such as the archer's other abilities that I didn't show off, I'd like to thank John H. Hoffnagel IV, or Lancet Jades, on GameFAQs for providing a list of all the items that are in each area of the game, and it was because of the this user I was able to get a list of what the bosses had on them. Though, oddly enough, the list didn't say where the gold shield was, because I don't think the user ever found them. And I do believe that the gold shield is a rare drop, so that's probably why. But there you go. I found it. <laughs> huh. Well, with all that said and done, enough talking. Let's get to the bonus stuff. Okay, let's get this started and show off the other skills that the archer has. First off, we have Flame Arrow. Grants a flaming aura to arrows, and there's its base damage at level 1. Level 2. Yeah, I'm going to go through these rather quickly. Level 3. Level 4. And finally, level 5. This honestly doesn't do the that whole much damage compared to shock arrow, but there you go. That's the animation for it, and... Yeah, there you go. That's what it looks like. That's how much damage it deals. Still, like I said, not as much damage as the shock arrow. And considering that this is the bonus stuff, I am going to be using save states on screen, so... Yeah. Now, ice arrow. Let's put a point in that. Enchant arrows with an icy aura. Shoots an ice arrow. There's level 1 damage. Level 2. Level 3. Level 4. And finally, level 5. 
Still not as much as this thing, though. Yeah, Jesus. And there's the animation for it, and listen to that crunch. Now, I do believe these arrows can, in fact, inflict the abilities that have the same... or that are essentially of the same type. So, flame arrows can have a possibility of igniting, ice arrows freezing, shock arrows... well, and of course, shock arrows, because it's the only one that's elemental, can electrify enemies. Now... Time to show off the exploding arrows. Enchant arrows so that they explode when they strike a target. And, yeah. And I do... That is in addition to the damage that a normal arrow would do. And yeah, for each point, it just increases the maximum by 25. Or by 5, I should say. If it was 25, oh god, I'd be dead. And... What the heck is this? The Legend of Zelda? And yeah, see, I told you, there is splash damage with it. And considering that it's splash damage, yeah, it's not exactly the best thing to use because enemies just end up closing the distance too quickly. And of course, just to put in a point as to what some of these skill, other skills that I never use do. Let's see, uh, let's see, yeah, it's essentially these other ones. Now, deflect missiles gives you a 5% chance per level. Toughness, 3 hit points per level. Willpower, five points per level. And there you go. That's it. That's all the skills that the archer has to offer. Now, if you do wish to play this game yourself, you could go ahead and play any of the other classes, such as the fighter or the wizard, because they offer vastly different play styles. Though, with the archer and the fighter, I guess it's not that much different, but the fighter does have some unique skills that the archer does doesn't have. And with the wizard, of course, you rely a lot more on magic, which I honestly personally love. Anyways, there is still one more thing that I would like to show you, so just give me a moment. Now, the final thing that I want to show you before ending this video off is the rewards you get for beating this game. And in order to show it off, I have to start a new game. And what we get is a new class, the Elven Fighter, who pretty much functions exactly as all three classes combined into one. Though considering you just beat the game, I don't really see much of a point, but okay. Now, I do believe that the Elven Fighter in the console versions of the game is supposed to be Dritz Duerden. And I have to say, I don't know much about this character. And though I can tell you that he is a fighter ranger drow. Yes, that's right, a drow. And... Something else that I can tell you is that he is a character in R.A. Salvatore's novels in the Icewind Dale trilogy. Though, if I do mess some things up, yeah, you're going to have to forgive me. And let me tell you, this character has some insane physical stats. But other than that, like, not really much in the ways of mental stats. Let's see, let's just go here. Just want to... There you go, that's intelligence. Nah, I can't show off wisdom. Let's see, 13 wisdom, not that great. I mean, that's only one less than what I had. 16 in that, and 15 in that. Yeah, there you go. Though, that is a lot of... That is a lot of ability scores to be using. That makes this character mad! Or class, really. Well, anyways, I think that's enough fooling around. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this Let's Play, as well, this game was actually kind of fun, since I'd never actually had beaten this before. But now that I... But of course I have beaten this when I did my personal playthrough, so this is actually the second time that I've beaten it. Well, anyways, that's enough. So, that shall be it for me. I've been the Northern Star Dragon. This has been Let's Play Baldur's Gate Dark Alliance on the Game Boy Advance, and I shall see you in the next LP, whatever it may be.